What happens if you refuse Australia's new digital ID? A choice every Aussie faces. Do you want to use your digital ID to log in? That little pop-up will soon be everywhere in 2025, from government websites to banks, telcos, and even utilities. Some people welcome it as a safer, quicker way to prove who they are online. Others feel uneasy, worried about privacy, control, or government overreach. So here's the big question. What happens if you refuse Australia's digital ID in 2025? Let's break it down with a real-life style story, backed by facts and figures. First things first, what is Australia's digital ID? Think of digital ID like a digital version of your driver's license or passport. Instead of handing over photocopies of your birth certificate, license and bills every time you need to prove who you are, you use a single secure login. Here are the basics. It's not a card. There's no new plastic card in your wallet. Your digital ID lives in apps like MyGovID or other accredited services. One login, many services. As of 2025, you can use it for over 130 government services. Tax, Centrelink, Medicare, license renewals, etc. Australian Government Digital ID System. Private sector rollout. In the next couple of years, banks, telcos, and even utilities will be allowed to join. Data and NAMP. Digital roadmap. Security. Your data isn't stored in one big government database. Instead, accredited providers store only what's needed, and they must meet strict privacy rules. Voluntary, for now, the Digital ID Act 2024 makes clear that no one can force you to use it. By law, you must always be given another way to prove who you are. In short, it's a digital passport for the internet. Convenient but controversial. Haven't we already had an ID? The tax file number story. Here's the funny thing. Australians already have something close to a national ID. The tax file number and TFN. Every Aussie who earns money needs a TFN. It's a nine-digit number, the same format as the United States Social Security number, SSN. For decades, TFNs have quietly acted as a kind of citizen ID used by the ATO, ASIO, banks and employers to track income, taxes and superannuation. So while digital ID feels new, the truth is Australia has already been running a centralised ID system of sorts. The difference? The TFN is limited to tax and finance, while digital ID spreads across everyday life, health, banking, utilities, licences and more. That's why the shift feels bigger and scarier to many people. But what about security? This is the million dollar question. If all my eggs are in one basket, doesn't that basket become a hacker's dream? Here's how it actually works. Not one giant database, your digital ID isn't stored in one central spot. Each accredited provider, like MyGovID or future private sector players, holds only the data they need. Fewer copies of your ID. Ironically, using digital ID can reduce risk because you aren't uploading photocopies of your license, passport, or utility bills to dozens of different companies. Strong security rules. Accredited providers must meet strict requirements around encryption, two-factor authentication, and independent audits. Oversight comes from the ACCC and the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner. History shows risks are real. In 2022, the Optus and Medibank hacks 
exposed millions of Australians' data. Critics argue digital ID just creates a bigger target. Proponents argue it's safer because fewer businesses will store sensitive documents. Bottom line, it's not all eggs in one basket, but it is fewer baskets. Whether that feels safer or scarier depends on your level of trust in government and big tech. The future of digital ID, safe or hackable? Right now, Australia's digital ID uses strong encryption and independent oversight to keep your identity safe. But what happens when superintelligent AI or quantum computers enter the picture? Quantum computing. Threats. Today's encryption relies on maths problems that would take classical computers billions of years to crack. A full-scale quantum computer could break many of these in minutes. Superintelligent AI risks. A rogue or malicious AI could discover exploits humans haven't even thought of yet. In the hands of bad actors, this could mean automated, large-scale identity theft. Armnum's race in security. Governments and tech companies are already developing post-quantum cryptography, new forms of encryption designed to survive quantum attacks. But the race is on. I, Probability Forecast, Simplified, Digital ID Security 2025. A85% safe for most Australians. Strong protections, but still vulnerable to human error and leaks. Digital ID Security, 2030 with early quantum computing, so 60% safe unless post-quantum computing upgrades are in place. Digital ID Security 2040 Plus with super artificial intelligence in play drops to near 40% if bad actors weaponize AI and quantum computing before government's hardened defenses. In other words, digital ID is fairly safe today, but its long-term survival depends on upgrading encryption before quantum computing and superintelligence arrive in full force. The Tale of Ellie, the Refuser Ellie is an everyday Aussie. She loves tech, but hates handing over control of her identity. When asked to sign up for digital ID, she politely says, no thanks. At first, it seems fine. For a license renewal, the service centre tells her she can just bring physical documents. Easy enough. But the cracks soon appear. At the bank, she's told, we prefer digital ID. It's faster. Without it, Ellie has to provide multiple certified documents and wait longer for approval. When signing up, for a new mobile plan, she's bumped into a manual verification queue that may take longer. For government services, she can't access the one click and line process and has to juggle paperwork and counter visits. Ellie's refusal doesn't block her for services, but it slows her down, adds red tape and sometimes costs more. Digital ID in Australia. Pros versus cons. Here's a simple snapshot for anyone weighing up whether to use digital ID or not. Pros, why some say yes, convenience. One login for tax, Medicare, Centrelink, licenses, and more. Less paperwork, no need to scan and upload multiple documents every time. Faster service. Instant verification, instead of waiting days or weeks. Better security, in theory. Fewer copies of your ID floating around at different companies. Private sector expansion. Banks, telcos and utilities joining means more everyday use cases. Cons, why some say no. 
all eggs in one basket. Fear. If a digital ID provider is hacked, the fallout could be massive. Trust issues. Many Australians worry about government overreach or misuse of data. Not truly optional, long term. While legally voluntary, refusing may push you into the slow lane for services. Risk of function creep. Once established, the system could expand into more areas of life than originally promised. History of data breaches, Optus and Medibank hacks show even big companies aren't invincible. What the numbers say, 27.1% of Australians are online. Mine in 2020, 26.1 million people. 55% already have a digital ID through MyGov ID, but only 34% realise it. 86% of Australians say digital ID providers must be strongly regulated for privacy. The government has invested $288 million in digital ID infrastructure, with $57.4 million set aside in the 2024 to 25 budget to keep it running. Source, Digital Lives of Australians, 2025 Report, Data Reportal, Services Australia Budget Papers, Should You Refuse. At the end of our story, Ellie makes a compromise. She uses digital ID for everyday low-risk tasks, like license renewals, but avoids it for more sensitive matters. That balance gives her convenience and some privacy. The truth is, refusing digital ID in 2025 is your right, but it comes at a cost. You'll still be able to access services, just slower, harder, and sometimes more expensive. Final word, Australia's digital ID system isn't compulsory, but the world is moving digital first. If you refuse, you won't be locked out but you may feel left behind. Like it or not, the slow lane is where non-digital ID users will spend most of their time in 2025 and beyond. Tip for viewers, stay informed. If you choose not to use a digital ID, always check your rights, keep your physical documents up to date and be ready for extra steps. What do you think? Will you adopt the Australian digital ID or stick to the old ways? Drop a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts.